Good morning, folks. We're looking at a bright active region turning over the southeastern limb. It doesn't have any sunspots, but we've got a number of top stories today, so let's begin at a slightly tweaked spaceweathernews.com, now a bit more than the AIA-193 on the homepage top. Scrolling, you have 304 and Soho Lasco down the left side. Nothing taken away, just added and feng shuied on the page as we go to 193 angstroms and find that even without sunspots, the incoming brightness does stand out on the sphere. Dark coronal holes lingering through their turn earth-facing, and they have been setting the higher intensity solar wind, which plateaued at this elevated range yesterday, but the stability of it allowed Earth's magnetic field to handle the plasma stream a bit better. No further geomagnetic storm events. The coronal hole is expected to continue the elevated stream intensity at least a few more days. If you haven't heard, it appears a tornado tore through South Carolina yesterday. Footage does look unpleasant. And then more of the cold variety is on the way, and that goes for a swath across the entire continental U.S. More cold records, more snow records, firmly in the crosshairs. So the ESA has put out a study on the damage able to be caused by a single extreme space weather event to Europe. They came up with 15 billion, which is arguably low, but they did clarify it was one major storm and not consecutive impacting CMEs, etc. The real numbers for the worst case scenario are closer to 100 billion or more just in Europe, especially with the geomagnetic vulnerability of the northern nations like Sweden and Norway. Their report is linked below. Top earthquake of the last day struck Japan, luckily a little bit off the coast there. Interesting piece on using machine learning to predict earthquakes. Right now, they are still in the process of figuring out how they will be looking for patterns. If they want to skip the figuring and the searching, we've got some patterns they can start checking already. Yesterday's big event has been added to the homepage updates, quakewatch.net. Moving on to the five-year anniversary of the Global Precipitation Mission, they have a full article and highlight video linked for you, but hopefully you're recognizing many of these analyses and views even if you didn't know they came from GPM. Five years on, still going strong. Our last two stories today hit items in the Milky Way. First, coming into the center of the galaxy, our radio telescopes notice just about everything circling that central point in Sagittarius A, where our galactic nucleus is found. But some things do not seem to be orbiting that central point, like a gas cloud they say is instead circling a smaller version just astride of the galactic center, which would be at longitude zero as you look at the bottom of those charts. So either it is circling a smaller version, or it's circling around one of the toroids around the galactic center. Either way, it is off to the side of the main event. And so let's jump out to larger scales of the Milky Way and peek in on Antlia 2 because the dwarf, diffuse satellite of our galaxy could be an excellent candidate for Bose-Einstein condensate dark matter. That would make it normal bosonic matter and not something new or magical, although we do have to take off some points for suggesting axion-like particles which don't have nearly as much electric interaction as they do fantasy features. Have to throw this in here, folks. We are 20 episodes into our Earth Catastrophe Cycle series, and it all started with Chan Thomas and the Adam and Eve story. Adrian D'Amico and Gary Long, my childhood best friend and his associate, got the full book and yes, dozens of pages were missing, including an epilogue. The first of their multi-part series on Suspect Sky Channel began last night. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, today is a fly on the wall podcast day. Adrian is a member of the podcast crew. That's coming up in a few hours. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.